streaming. I believe so anyways. What's going on here? My chat room looks different. I did something. <clears throat> ah. Ah. Everything's always changing. Wait. There we go. There we go. Now I can see the chat room. So it is January the 12th. Good Lord, the first two weeks of this year have just hammered by. We have been shipping like mad around here. How's it going, Lord Dalius? Yeah, I can't believe it's already the 12th. This is absolutely nuts. Uh, apparently I didn't comb my hair either, but eh, you win some, you lose some. So there you go. <laughs> Too bad these first few weeks have been so slow and boring. <laughs> They've been something. <laughs> it's been a, it's been an invigorating uh, news cycle. Let's, <laughs> let's just put it that way. How's it going? How's it going, Dean Samuel? <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it, we won't go down that road, but <laughs> yeah, it's been an interesting uh, couple of weeks. But you know, here we've just been uh, we, uh, Gaxmore, the Los Angeles Gaxmore Fifth Edition version landed before, right before Christmas, and. We got as many of those out as we possibly could, and then, of course, Christmas, and then we worked right after, starting on the 26th, we were back at it, uh, shipping again. Um, it was like a thousand packages or something, and then, uh, of course, on top of that are all the orders that we were servicing, and it's been, it's been a brisk season, and then Amazon's been ordering a lot of stuff, so uh, it's, um, yeah, it's, it, it's just been a lot of boxes flying out of here. I'm surprised the post office hasn't run us off, but... Um, they're always so super nice at the post office. And I gotta say, we've shipped God knows how many packages through them, and I, so few are actually lost. There's occasionally, and once in a while, a damage, but uh, they do a fantastic job. I, I got no complaints at the post office. And I remember about the seventh large, so we, we what we do uh, when we take, if it's a, a light day, we just take it and drop it, but most days we're at the back of the, you know, we take it to the loading dock. We have a smaller post office up here, so we take it to the loading dock, and they have these huge metal baskets on wheels. You know, they're I don't know, four by four probably, and four feet deep. And we fill those up, uh, and we roll them in. And I, know, I noticed on the twenty eighth, maybe the first, something like that. There were several of the bins just sitting there that we, <laughs> that we had rolled in. They hadn't gotten to them yet. Uh, one of their employees had a car wreck, all this other stuff. But uh, one of the one of the, the couriers, is that what they are? The, the people who deliver them out. Uh, she was, I was unloading a truck one day, me and Wilson were, and, and she came walking out. She, she pointed to the back of the truck. She said, you know what that is? I said, what is that? Uh, she said, that's job security, <laughs> which is kind of cool. So I guess their post office is small enough that it's been, uh, it's been on the chopping block a couple of times. You know, they do that all the time with the post office, They're constantly closing and opening and moving and all kinds of stuff. So, uh, and ours is, it serves a, an elderly uh, population, but uh, it's pretty small. Though I guess the the books that you guys buy and the TLG ships is a uh, is a good thing. It's helping those people keep their jobs, which is nice. <sighs> Invigorating is one word for it. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, it's a word for it. These stupid commercials every time you log on are more than a little ridiculous. Ah, commercials are always ridiculous, Jason. And surely you remember the day television had commercials every, was it eight minutes? They did, or is it every 12 minutes? Maybe 12 minutes, wasn't it? There's was like two blocks of commercials in a 30 minute show, if I remember correctly. And you had to get up and go to the bathroom and get something to eat or, or get punched by your brother or whatever. How's it going, Commander Pete? It looks like my Gaxmore might be delivered tomorrow. It's with po Hey, that's great. Uh, the, I tell you, the. I'm not sure if you you were one of them. About 80% of those packages that shipped overseas got refunds because the Global Post folks, this is a new, it's not a new company, I don't know how old it is. It's a company that we're working with. It uh, gives us a really nice discount and uh, they seem to be doing a really good job. We, we pack them, send them, and they, they freight forward them everywhere. So it seems to be getting there faster than it used to, which is, which is nice. Um, you know, the discount is nice. But it's also nice that it gets there intact. Uh, that's very cool. Good deal, man. I'm glad to do this. It's every 15% of every TV show. So for a one-hour program, you get 15 minutes of commercials or 25% of any of 
Yeah, so I remember that. You, 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 you just weathered it, man. It wasn't that bad. It's just commercials. They were horrible, though. <laughs> Most of them. Except, and Jason, I know you remember these, the toy commercials were awesome. Saturday morning cartoons. You get to watch those toy commercials. How's it going, Tim? We will assume you will be able to watch the... Where's the beef? <laughs> oh, yeah. I remember that. That was really, for me, the first huge slogan commercial that just took the whole freaking world by storm. Um, everybody was, where's the beef? Where's the beef? G.I. Yeah, Joe, yeah. That's, man, those commercials were... That's why we had cartoons. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We had some good cartoons, man. I love Tarzan. That's probably my favorite cartoon of all time. I loved that cartoon as a kid. Uh, Saturday morning, Saturday mornings, you're plopped in front of the TV watching those bright colors. It's, it, I guess it's no real different than watching football or baseball or Twitch or whatever. <laughs> Just watching bright colors as your mind kind of zones out. <laughs> I can't believe I ate the whole... <laughs> Yeah, what were some of those other... There was a lot of slogans came out in the 80s. All kinds of stuff. That's when commercials got a little bit more... You know, before, I think, commercials were kind of um, neutral. They never called out other brands. They never, you know, singled out other brands as, this brand sucks, my brand's good, or stuff like that. But the 80s began to change that. You had your taste tests, you know, with Pepsi and whatnot. And I remember the detergents did it. They started to go to war with one another. The the, the uh, gentlemanly behavior ended, and it was just, it became a knife fight. And, and now it's just some weird, it's just some weird quest to become as surreal as humanly as possible so that when you're watching a commercial, you have no f***ing idea what you're buying. <laughs> I suppose that's the, that's the way it is now. G.I. Joe with Kung Fu Grip. Oh, yeah. We we had all of those. Those 12 foot. No, 12 foot. Those 12 inch G.I. Joe's. Those things were awesome. How's it going, Great Pape? I'm as amazed, dismayed at how many of ad jingles are still lodged in my brain decades later. You know, I'm kidding. Yeah, you hear it and <laughs> it'll knock it out of your, knock it out of the, the, the dusty caverns of your mind. And there it is, stuck. Oops, I was singing one of those the other day. Uh, I'm not sure if this was local or national. I have no idea. Uh, but it was something Matt Golden, co-creator of CNC, used to always say, you just spice up your life, spice up your life, spice up your life with ponchos. I don't know if that was a local chain or, or national, but my God, that was <laughs> that was everywhere forever in our lives. <laughs> Which detergent tastes worse? Yeah, there you go. The taste test. The Pepsi, was it? It was Pepsi that did the taste tests, right? I think. And you're surprised it's Pepsi. And I always thought... When I watch those commercials, is that really the the angle that you want to take? That people are surprised your drink tastes good? <laughs> it was just always very... Okay, so they both did it, but it was just always an odd thing. Surprise! My Coke tastes good. Man, we know Dr. Pepper tastes good. We don't need any damn taste test about that mess. Oh, good God, the bride cream. We don't need any of that. Yeah, that and see, and then that, this, the next thing, the commercials kind of evolved into they were pretty open about what they were selling, and uh, it was okay before that. <laughs> it was okay. Though I do miss, you know, and I know you're an anathema to say this in this modern age, but I miss the Marlboro Man. One of the three, I think. They all died of cancer. But, <laughs> but, but the Marlboro Man looked pretty badass with his horse smoking a cigarette, his hat, you know, the sunset behind him. Uh, it's pretty good stuff. Pretty good imagery to drive, to drive a young man to, to, to take on cancer sticks. Miraculously, Coke always found the Coke lovers and Pepsi always found the Pepsi lovers. How strange is that? <laughs> those, those were just weird. I always liked, uh, like Coke did a fantastic series of commercials when I was a kid. I think these were 70s, actually, where they would show some knucklehead on a hot, hot day, and he or she would, you know, they'd crack open that Coke, and you'd hear that fizz, and then they'd take that drink, and you would see the, the bottle. It would be a glass bottle of Coke. And it would have all the, the, the condensation on it or whatever the hell's on it, ice falling off of it. And if you're watching that commercial in August or July or whatever, you think, man, I want a coat. And that's just good. That's just good advertising. You don't have to attack your neighbor. You don't have to point out their flaws. You don't have to do any of that crap. Just show how good your product is and people will go. Uh, then, of course, Coke did the song. What was their song? They did uh, the whole... The whole world loves a Coke. The whole world... Something. Some kind of Coke and the world loves you song. I can't remember what it was. I'd like to teach the world to sing. That's it, Jason. Yeah. Now, I will say this. As much as I love Dr. Pepper, their commercials were horrible. 
I don't remember any Dr. Pepper commercials. <laughs> they were just all horrible. <laughs> I'd like to buy the Coke. Yeah, the world of Coke. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Perfect Harmony. You all are going to sing it here pretty soon. <laughs> We can get a harmony. Jason's a musician. We can get a harmony section going. Oh, no, that's true. They did the pepper. I forgot about that. She's a pepper. He's a pepper. Those were good. Those were good commercials. I had completely forgotten about that. <laughs> Dr. Pepper has commercials. Yeah, why would they need commercials? They got the greatest soft drink of all time. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's interesting. I don't... It's weird, too, now, because uh, I stream... I don't actually stream that much. I watch Netflix, I guess, and Hulu, but I purchase crap through... Apple TV, like The Walking Dead, I just buy the season and I move on. Um, but um, I don't get any commercials now. <laughs> and on the rare occasions that I've done something weird to my Hulu account and commercials pop on, I'm like completely flabbergasted. I was like, whoa, what is, what's going on here? I don't, I don't understand what's happening. Because I just don't watch them anymore. I don't watch a lot of sports, so I don't even get the football, you know, the Super Bowl commercials. Uh, if it pops up on YouTube, I pay zero attention to it. Um, and I don't even get commercials on YouTube now that I think about it. I don't think I get commercials on YouTube. I have no idea, but <clears throat> the doctor doesn't need to advertise. That's right, King Gothar. <laughs> Little sweet commercials. Justin Garini. Those... I'll have to look those up. I don't remember those. <laughs> the new Fansville Dr. Pepper commercials are good. Uh, I'll have to take your word for it. I want to check this one out. I, I, want to, I don't want to forget that. Let's see. Is it a Dr. Pepper gray paper? Is that what you're talking about? Uh, yeah, here we go. See if I can remember this. <laughs> I do remember those. <laughs> I'm not sure that made me want to drink a Dr. Pepper. And I guess that's what I'm, I guess that's what I mean. So many of these, and it doesn't matter who, it's not one of the soft drinks, it's everybody. You, you got to sell the product. You know, you got to make me want it. Uh, and that's kind of the hard thing. All of this commercials aside, we're here for Ask Me Anything at Troll Talk today. Um, I'm Stephen Chenault, CEO of Troll Lord Games. So if you have any questions about anything from, from Justin Garani's Dr. Pepper, uh, then we'll have to <laughs> go from Grape Ape. We'll have to answer us that one uh, to games to whatever. Uh, shoot them out and we'll, uh, we'll digest them here in the chat uh, and see what we can come up with. All of this talk, I had to go get a coke so you have to get a Dr. Pepper too. <laughs> A little sweet is like Dr. Pepper mascot for the last past five years. Oh, that is funny. I, didn't, I had no idea. See, I get no, I just get no commercials anymore, which is interesting, and I think should be, uh, it, it should be a huge, um, I don't know, something to, to advertisers, to marketers that that people may maybe not get in their commercials so much. But I guess that's what influencers are for. Is that what they're called now? People who, who have a lot of uh, social media. Uh, whatever presence and then they do whatever they'll take castles and crusades and play it and then they influence other people to they advertise uh, same thing but I guess that's what's replacing the traditional marketing I have no idea how's the Howard art book coming uh, so volume one's finished so far as I know and in editing and he's on to volume two he's hoping to have at least be at least into volume three by the time uh, we launch in March um, and and that March is still a tentative date, but uh, that is that is definitely the plan. So he's hammering away at it, and Mike is, uh, uh, he's quite a professional. You know, he's he just retired from thirty eight years running two local comic book shops, um, and he's now on the city council, I think, at the city he's in. So he does the city council thing, and then he works on this stuff. Uh, he does a lot of writing for the boroughs people too. He's he actually I don't know if I can say this, but he finished one of the boroughs books. It was very kind of cool. Uh, Mike is, uh, uh, he's a good guy. He's a good guy, so he's hammering away on it. Uh, we did not get any snow down here. We got a little bit of frosting, and that's about it. I did, Vic, I did actually get up this morning, and there was a little bitty female black-eyed junco outside, half frozen on the pavement, and I brought her in the office. I let her warm up. Um, after an hour or so, she started hopping around, and then when the sun was up and out, I, I let her go. So I didn't get snow, but I got a, a black-eyed junco, if that, <laughs> if that means anything. <laughs> He's the American Idol singer that finished second next to Kelly Clarkson. Oh, wow. Holy crap. So the dude can sing. But he needs to make me want to drink Dr. Pepper. How's it going, Chad Skiles? Uh, tell him about our bundle. Oh, yeah. we Now, Jason, we already may have lost Tim. He he usually can hang in for about 10 minutes and his internet gets down. So 
She's got worldwide fame and, and reaches. He got Dr. Pepper, so I might say that he's the real winner. Damn right he is. If he's got a lifetime supply of Dr. Pepper, he's golden. What more does he need? <laughs> Steve getting his druid on. Yeah. You know, I feed, I got a, a bird feeder out there. I feed every day. Uh, I put feed out for, especially when it's cold, I put extra out, and usually in the afternoons too. So I got all kinds of birds. Um, but um, there's been a couple of rescues, <laughs> a couple of rescues. I had to get a. A possum's head out of a jelly, a jelly jar. He couldn't get out of that, so there was that. That was kind of interesting. Run the cats off every now and again. But I figure if a cat gets one, well, that's just survival of the fittest. That's the way that goes. <laughs> uh, well, we're bird lovers here, so you, so you're already, there we go. <laughs> I love birds. I absolutely love them. I, I can sit and watch birds just for hours. When it's warm, I'll eat outside and I'll sit out there and just have lunch, uh, you know, take lunch at 11 o'clock and I sit out there and just watch the birds do their thing. I have to admit, I get a little frustrated with the squirrels. I don't care that they eat the bird feed, but they get in that feeder and they won't get out of that feeder. If they would just, if they would just eat and get out, let everybody else get in there and get a turn, be all right. But circle of life and all that, it'll work it all, so itself out. Sounds like it's just what the doctor ordered, and I'm fixing to get one in about 30 seconds. What's the most Arkansas thing you I've ever heard a possum was in a jelly jar? Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, it's funny because I got up in the morning and I was, the recycle thing that city gives us is just a, an open tub or whatever, and, and uh, last year, two years ago when this happened, they actually took glass. Now, they don't take glass anymore. I don't know, I don't know what's going on with the glass, but, but, um. They were, I mean, you just throw your, your stuff in, you know, whatever. And these animals will come up, raccoons, possums, and uh, there's another little rodent we get to. I hadn't seen them in a while, the, not a rodent, um, groundhog. The groundhog's, it's not a groundhog. No, 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 no. I can't remember what the hell it is. Woodchuck, the woodchuck comes up. But those possums get everywhere, and they get into everything. The raccoons do too. Um, but I got, I was making my toast, and I heard this thump, 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 thump. And I, <laughs> I went and looked down the window, Little bastard had gotten into the tub, and he was clearly cleaning the remnants of the jelly out of the jar and had his head stuck in it. He was trying to get it off by just flopping around. God knows how long he'd been flopping around when he was doing that. But I, I grabbed him and boop, you know, popped his head out of there. Speaking of bird feeders, I just backed a Kickstarter last month that has a built-in camera that identifies and sends pictures of the birds at your feeder. Oh, that's very cool. I got this. Uh, what do I got here? It's not, it's not quite as fancy as your built-in camera, but I got this Birds of Arkansas that I, I constantly have to open, and you'll see the bird for like 12 seconds, and then I got to open it and try to remember what the bird looked like, and yeah, frequently I don't know what the hell I'm looking at. Uh-oh, did Jason get busted? <laughs> Jason, you got busted. Let me get with Chuck. Uh... <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> How's it going, clever? In the summer, we'll find these. Oh, wait, some jumped. In the summer, we'll find these sticky raccoon footprints around in now empty hummingbird feeders. Oh yeah, those raccoons are absolutely crazy. Um, we get little families of them. I think the weirdest thing I've seen. I used to have. We got a pet door. I got dogs. We got a pet door. And um, I used to keep the food in a big bag. I fed them outside, and I keep. I kept the food in a big bag by the door. And I sit and I watch TV one night, and this, <laughs> this hand slips very quietly through the pet door, and it grabbed the the bag of dog food and started dragging it to the door. And I thought, are you kidding me? I'm sitting right here. It was so funny. I had to run him off, and he was not he was not happy. <sighs> but they're smart. All those little fellows are smart. They figure out where food is. They get it going. <sighs> I like feeding animals. They amuse me. Well, thank you for the gifted sub there, Clever. Very cool. Uh, yeah, there you go, Jason. I think someone's got you hooked up. Okay, Commander Pete's got you hooked up. There you go. <laughs> what class level is John Carter? Good Lord. Um, I'd have to make him a fighter, I think. Probably just, just for Castles and Crusades, probably a straight up fighter, and he's got to be over 20th level. Uh, 22nd, 23rd, I mean, something like that. John Carter is a badass. I love John Carter. You know, I'm rereading the Lord of the Rings. Uh, I need to reread that John Carter stuff. I haven't read that in years. 
Uh, let's see. Rabbits are my bane. We have the whole backyard fence in Ward. I've named it Firebase Valley on <laughs> my wife's <wife's> gardener. <laughs> Yeah, really. If you're gardening, rabbits will get you. I haven't seen rabbits. We get them once in a while, but but not very often. I love rabbits, but they're so stupid. They're like chipmunks. I have no idea how they have survived this long <laughs> on this planet. This is extraordinarily violent. Yeah, but they they've uh, they, they they've made it. So I guess that's good. I think the worst picture I've ever seen. I think it's not somewhere on the internet. And it's this rabbit that's been scooped up by a hawk. And the hawk is already, you know, banking up, and you can see it looking up, its wings out, you're doing the whole whatever hawk thing. But the rabbit is still chewing, <laughs> chewing the grass that it that it was eating when the when the hawk grabbed it. It's not quite realized that it's dead yet. <laughs> I look at that picture and I think, what the, what the hell are you doing? But they're cute. I guess cute chipmunks are cute too. That goes a long way. <laughs> yeah, and getting kind of. I'm getting kind of a little scrabble there. I need to shave that off. It's about one day from the itchy, itchy part. It's going to start driving me nuts. Oh, they're writing this funny stuff there. Uh, my father found the best thing for the garden to keep critters out are King Edward potatoes. Ideally propelled in the direction. <laughs> I thought it was some food thing to keep them out. But it's really just a missile. There you go. <laughs> it's enjoying his last meal. Yeah, there you go. I'm going to die anyways. I might as well eat this. That's probably what he was thinking. I'll go with that, blood wild. <laughs> That's better than my, my theory of stupid. <laughs> so, poor little bastard. <sighs> what in that Sam Hill am I doing now? All right, here we go. Anyways. All right, I know y'all are tired of hearing me ask about it. Steve, Steve, you got any recommended reads this month? So I'm actually, bizarrely, uh, I plunged into, you know, I started reading that Spartan history, and I got deep into that Spartan history, and I have no idea why I picked up Oh, yeah, I, I found, I was cleaning a trunk out, and I found a, an old, old copy of The Hobbit, and I read it just on a lark, and it didn't take me very long. And then I thought, you know, I'm going to read the, I'm going to read the, I'm going to read the books. And I, I am now deep into the Two Towers, and I'll say this with no disrespect to the movies. Um, the movies are great, I enjoyed them. But they're, they really did deviate. I don't remember, when I watched them in the theater, I don't remember the movies deviating from the book as much as they actually did. Those, those movies really did deviate from the books a lot. So I can see why the purists were a little bit grumpy about the whole thing. But um, I don't know. Clever, ask me a subject that you're looking for, and I, I probably got some book rolling around in my head that, <laughs> that I would recommend. Uh, but right now, um, they are at the Battle of Helm's Deep, actually. Uh, Aragorn and Theoden are talking about their next move. Uh, let's see. Uh, the removal of cats and wandering dogs. Uh, let them flourish. <laughs> yeah, we get... Yeah, the problem with cats is they breed so much. So down here in Arkansas, where it stays warm, it's you'll get six litters a year, and you'll have so many cats. My neighbor feeds the cats, and uh, there was 18 in his yard one day, which is way too many cats. <laughs> way too many cats. Uh, for, you know, a cat, I think, needs like two square miles or one square mile. It needs a certain amount of space to hunt and, and do all of that stuff. And we get rats here, so you certainly want to have cats. But uh, <laughs> 18, and, 18 and a little block, uh, that's not a good idea. And Happy New Year to you too, Mr. Obadiah. Well, that's good. I'm glad you got to enjoy the beach. I've been wanting to go to the beach quite a bit lately. It's not in, it's not in the cards anytime soon, but, but it's been on my mind. The whole world will be here any minute if you catch. And if they catch you, they will kill you. But first you must catch. First, they must catch you. That sounds like that's from a Watership Down is what that sounds like, Big Danger. That's a great book. Books are always so much better than a movie. Yeah, I got to tell you now, and I love the movies. I know no, nothing against the movies, but um, I, I, these books are better than the movies. These are better than the movies, found out. Anything big that sticks out from a book that you really wish was in the movie? Um, I wish that they would have done Gimli and Legolas a little bit more like Gimli and Legolas. And I wish they would have used the dialogue a little bit more. The dialogue in the book is very good. Um, and they changed it. Like uh, the scene where... And I just happened to read this in the Fellowship and then I went and watched the, the clip on YouTube just because my memory was all jumbled. Uh, the scene where Boromir first meets Aragorn in the movie, he's, he's painted completely differently than he is in the book. So I just wish they had stayed a little bit truer to the characterization that Tolkien had created as opposed to trying to make... I know what they were doing. I get it. I understand the, the medium, but 
they, they took each of the characters and took their flaws and accentuated them so that they stood out more. I don't, I don't think that was necessary. I, I honestly think that Hollywood, and the writers and TV shows and movies frequently do that. They try to, they, they take a character trait and they accentuate it so much, they exaggerate it to the point because they want us to see it, but we're not idiots, we can see it. You don't have to overstate something to get your point across. So you know, that's probably my biggest problem with it. But um, yeah, I don't know. I think dialogue would probably be one of the biggest things. And Gimli, Gimli, I'm a huge dwarf fan, so Gimli's the, I wish they would have done him a little bit, a little bit shorter thing. What about books on medieval histories? Well, I always, um, if you want a general histories, I'm a little bit weaker on that, but a specific book that I think spans, I, I'm, I'm not going to remember the author's name, it's going to drive me crazy. Um, it's one of my favorite books, it's called Henry II, it's about King Henry II, uh, it's just a biography of King Henry II, and this spans from what, 10, you know, from like 11, 10 up through 1180, and it's really... It's such, Henry II was such an important part of medieval Europe, uh, Western Europe, not so much you know Slavic Europe or Germanic Europe, but uh, all of France and all of England and Ireland. Henry, Henry II spanned almost an entire century, not quite, but almost, uh, and he ruled all of northern France, and his wife ruled huge swaths of southern France, and he ruled England. He warred with the Scots and the Irish. I think Henry II is the one who conquered Ireland. Um, so... In reading his bio, you actually, you actually end up kind of consuming mountains of material on all of Western Europe, France, and England specifically, simply because he lived. You know, he was born in Anjou, and he, he ruled in Anjou and Maine, and then he married the ex queen of, or the divorced queen of the king of France. So there's all of that. Then he warred with France all the time. Um, I can't remember the author of it. I could go get it. It's in there. It's a fantastic history. Uh, Henry II, I strongly, strongly recommend that book. It's well written too, which really, really helps. Let's see if it'll pop up real quick. And of course, he's the father of John, and he's. Uh, nah, I'd have to get my book. He's the father of John. What the, the internet's driving me insane these days. Ah, here we go, right here. W. L. Warren. So W. L. Warren's biography of Henry II. And for those of you who don't know, Henry II was father of King Richard the Lionhearted. He was father of King John, the one from the cartoon. Uh, his other son, Geoffrey, and Henry the Younger died without achieving much. But Geoffrey died in a, in a joust. He was, of course, married to Eleanor of Aquitaine, who was arguably one of the most powerful women to have ever lived in Western Europe. Uh, who in turn was married to the King Charles the Seventh or King Louis the Seventh? One of the I can't remember one of the French kings. I get all those jumbled in my head. Um, but Henry the Second by W. L. Warren strongly recommend that book. And it's going to want you once you read that you're going to want to know more about Richard and John and all of these knuckleheads that kind of fed through it. And the cool thing is, um, if you want uh, a, one of the few medieval biographies that we have, William Marshall, who was this knight who rose, he was like the fifth son of something or the other. He's the famous son when King Stephen said, King Stephen actually, so when King Stephen was king of England and the, the barons rebelled against him, some of them did, he took hostages from some others, but uh, the Marshall family rebelled, re remained, you know, rebellious against him. So King Stephen took, had young William with him and he told William's father, I'll put him in a catapult and hurl him against your walls if you don't surrender the castle. And William's father said, go ahead, I, my loins are still, you know, Everything's still working down there, so I can make more sons. And uh, of course, King Stephen was like, "I'm not going to throw this baby against the wall. That's fucking crazy." So he raised William, and then of course farmed him out. And William, so William is this kind of <laughs> disenfranchised fifth son or third son or fourth son of this minor baronial family. Mm -hmm. But William Marshall rises uh, first under King Stephen, but mostly under King Henry the uh, Second to be really one of the most renowned knights in all of Christendom. Mm -hmm. So renowned to the point that when during Richard's rebellion against his dying father and his last things, uh, William Marshall refused. Everyone quit Henry's side except William. Uh, and William met Will, met Richard the second, Richard the Lionhearted, Richard the first, Richard the Lionhearted on a road. And he would not give him the road. So And Richard wouldn't fight him because he was afraid of this aged William Marshall. Because William Marshall was... And he was the shit. <laughs> he was the dude. So there's and there, and he's, there we've got a biography of William Marshall written at the time. It's it's very short, very very good. It's 
called The Greatest Night. I don't know. It's called something like that. Uh, so yes, Henry II by W.L. Warren. So what is your philosophy of, for product output? How do you decide what is a worthwhile product to write? Lately, I've noticed that Wizard of the Coast has been putting out these massive modules and people are getting really tired of them because there's such a lack of diversity in terms of product line. On the other hand, y'all seem to pump out these codexes fairly regularly and they're all super different. Well, that's one of the things that we try to do here at King Kothar. When we're, uh, when we're sitting there talking about what we're doing, and a lot of these product discussions happen with me and Davis usually in a conversation over a fire pit up in Harrison, Arkansas. Uh, Davis has an extraordinarily uh, creative mind. I, I'm sure I do too, but Davis and I just feed off of each other really well. Jason and Bay and I do this a lot too via Skype. But we'll just start batting ideas around, things that we want to see at the game, uh, at the table that we're playing with. And yet another adventure is not it. Adventures really, they're cool. I mean, they're good to showcase a product and they're good to do a little bit like Alstrag needs adventures. Uh, we like adventures, but... In the big picture is what what's going on at our table that's that people need and and that's where we go and these those codexes of course everyone sitting at a table wants to kind of everyone has their own philosophies and their own you know interests and all of that stuff and so you get this huge diverse pool of people that I like the Norse gods I like the Indian gods it's really cool you know the, the Tibetan stuff whatever it is and uh, um, so if if when that when that comes up in discussions either at the table and Dave and I are sitting around that's what we we start rolling these things around. Let's do this, or let's do this. Let's do something different. Uh, let's give the gamers everything that they possibly can get, uh, that they possibly could need at the table. That's really kind of the idea. Um, the setting material is cool, and we want to do more setting material, but we also want stuff that you guys can just do what I do. When I buy a book, I'll take 10 pages of a 30-page book and use it, and the rest just, oh, it's cool, but I don't use it. Uh, so we want stuff that's kind of modular that people can grab and use and, and, and pump all over the place. So most of, most of the beginning of it comes in conversations that we have, you know, at some point when we're just talking about what we need and what we want to see. And Davis comes, we both come, but Davis comes from a heavy, heavy, heavy RPG background. He started back in the 70s. I started in the 70s, but we started very differently. Davis started in about 75, and I started in about 76, 77, something like that. Uh, but Davis's trajectory was crazy. He's a little older than me, and he always had a little bit more money than me. He was always better at money in those days than I was. <laughs> I was doing whatever I did with money. Um, but uh, he bought every every conceivable type of RPG you could find on the market. I mean, uh, just uh, all of it. The Wii Warriors, all of it, everything he, Davis bought. I've got boxes of just old tattered books back there that are his that are just role-playing games. After D&D kind of became popular through the 70s, all kinds of stuff was coming out into the 80s. And he bought that stuff. So Davis has this huge pool of you know information rolling around in his noodle space that that he delves into and brings back into these discussions. Hey, you know what would be cool? Uh, and then and then we go from there. It's actually a very fun process. It's one of the processes I enjoy the most. Jason and I will have these long conversations via Skype and we, we land all this stuff out, and of course we've got 7,000 other things to do, so we don't ever get to half of it, but, <laughs> but if half of it makes it, that's cool. Um, Grab some on paper. Yeah, definitely check it out. Uh, uh, Clever, it is a very good book. Uh, I'm reading the final book in the Last Kingdom series at the moment, loving it. I need to read those books. Uh, I've kind of wandered into, I've kind of wandered back into fiction. We'll see how long I stay there. I, I, I do this every few years. I start reading fiction. I don't, I don't make it very long before I wander back into my history stuff. But uh, this is what I tell Tolkien fans who complain about The Hobbit and Jay and Lord of the Rings movies deviating from the book. Try being a Robert E. Howard fan and be great. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, yeah. You know, it's funny, too, Jason, that the latest Conan movie, I like it. Didn't Aquaman, the guy who played Aquaman, do that? I liked the actor, and it started out sort of cool um, with the egg thing. I thought that was kind of cool. There, I don't think there's any Howard precedent for that, but it was kind of cool. And then that, that movie just went... It went off the rails with the sword thing. I don't know, whatever. Uh, it just went off the rails. Uh, hey, don't speak ill of the, Con the, the Conan movie. Colin's all and Kane are bad, but the Conan movie is a fine adaptation. Read adaptation, not read Conan. Yeah, there you go. I actually came to appreciate Arnold Schwarzenegger's first movie. Uh, the second one, not so much. And then this, this one they did recently, not so much. I enjoyed the movie. But as a Conan movie, it kind of missed for me. Uh, though, the, I'll say this, the bar scenes were very cool. Um, they, they, I thought they caught that there, but um, Cole, Cole was an amazing beauty. <laughs> Be <ready to play>. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How's it going, Gabe Preacher? <laughs> I hope all is well in your neck of the woods. 
Uh, you should be over COVID by now, surely. Some movies based on books are good. Jurassic Park, but are never very good. Yeah, usually, and it's it's a hard to make the adaptation. And it's hard to read something, especially when you're younger. We read these books when we were younger. For them to actually, for them to actually make um, a movie that's going to recapture that. I remember when Thorn Oakenshield died. When I read that in a book, it was oh my god, was that just you know, mind-numbing to me. I remember the emotions from those days. I don't have them now when I read the book because it's like two paragraphs in the whole book. He, Bilbo walks up to him, says, hey, dude, ah, I'm dead. And he's dead. I mean, it's just like two fucking paragraphs in the whole thing. But my young 10-year-old, 8-year-old self, when I read The Hobbit, oh, that was like, it, it created this thing. I mean, it was this whole, this whole thing. Everyone was too whiny in the movie. The movie Jaws is way better than the book Jaws. Oh, that's interesting. I never read the book Jaws. Aragorn was too whiny in the movies. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't whine. Now, that was one thing that I, did, I didn't like in the movies is they had Arwen question her love with Aragorn, and I thought that was a complete break with the story. This, was, this love was supposed to be the equivalent of Baron and, and Luthien, and then the other two. I can't ever... The Elendil? Is it Elendil? No, Elendil's the son. Is it Elendil? Star of Elendil? Elendil? I don't know. Whoever it was. Um... <clears throat> Richard William Barber. <laughs> I assume that was for someone else. Uh, but uh, Thomas Beckett, clever. Thomas Beckett is another main character, a character, a, a person that you can learn about in reading Henry II. And Thomas Beckett is that famous, very, very close friend of Henry that Henry made Archbishop Bishop of, uh, or Bishop of, uh, which is Majigger. And then um, Beckett turned to the church and turned against Henry. And then they started this war that ended when when Henry said the famous lines, won't someone rid me of this troublesome priest? And a couple of his knights did. Murdered Beckett, now he's Saint Beckett. Um, Canterbury. Bishop of Canterbury. I knew it would come to me. Wouldn't say one, but Aragorn was more of a stoic in the books. A hard thing to portray. It is very hard to portray. That's kind of what I mean. They took the traits and exaggerated them a lot. <clears throat> his son was a cartoon line. I'm currently in the process of rereading Homer's The Odyssey. That is a read right there. I've never... I read one. What is it? The Odyssey and the Iliad? I read the Odyssey. I never read the Iliad. Uh, that's a read right there. Glad to hear it, brother. I've been... Blah, blah, blah. I'm currently reading Stormbringer. It's... <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny. You should say that, King. I was... When I... I was thinking yesterday while I was reading the Two Towers that I should reread the Mel Nabonian. The six of them, right? The six or seven Mel Nabonian books. Um, and I never read the later one. The Rose... The Garden of the Rose... The Something of the Rose. And I, I, I never read that one. I need to... Hey, everyone, just to remind, blah, blah. Just ordered a copy, Steve. Thanks for your always indulging my book questions. I love knowing what others are reading. Tell me what books you like, and I can tell you what kind of person you are. You are your kind of thing. Uh, well, I, I love questions about books, Clever. You, <laughs> we could turn this into a book discussion club. Uh, it's still my favorite passion. I love to read. I enjoy television. I enjoy movies. I enjoy video games. I enjoy gaming. But if given my druthers, I'll read. I'll take a book somewhere, plop down, and read. It's one reason I'll take a bath for an hour and a half because I can read. <laughs> I can read undisturbed in the bathroom. Um, but yeah, I'm just a huge. I just I love reading. Absolutely love reading. And history. What I try to tell people. Uh, my wife just discovered this. Has been married to me for twenty something years. Uh, history is actually filled with stories that are going to dwarf what happens in most movies that you see. It's astounding what our <laughs> our predecessors have done. Good and bad doesn't matter. It just it's what it is. What it is. Uh, reading history books, if you can find good ones. Now, there's a lot of dry, dusty tomes, but if you can find good history books, it's well worth reading them. I have to read them again. It's been a while. I remember Aragorn is a man of few words. He does not talk much in it, but key to so many things that we spend a lot of time in the head is, head is with his thoughts. Really needs to read. Yeah, it, and it really is. You get into this... <laughs> thanks for that homework. You get into this... Um, we all, all of us, I suspect, are the same age, and we get those images that were impl implant impl implanted imprinted imprinted upon our brains long long ago when we were very little when you in your formidable years are um, they are almost impossible to beat it's like when people today say I want my RPGs to be like they were when I was twelve well you're not twelve buddy <laughs> so they're not you wouldn't have to go balance a checkbook as soon as you're done gaming so it's just not going to work out that way <clears throat> it's just the way it is. Uh, let's see, I really enjoyed the Codex Lavorum. Good idea generator. That's not typical Western fantasy. I love that book. Yeah, oh I'm glad you. I'm glad you pointed that out. That's one of those, and I was super excited when um, I can't remember if that was my idea or Brian's to do that. But 
I think it was his. Uh, regardless, when it was pitched, I love the concept of pushing beyond the, the standard kind of Norse gods and the Greek gods and the Roman gods. And there's really cool stuff out there everywhere. I mean, and it's just, I don't know, there's so much rich material to, to borrow from, delve from, or to, I shouldn't even say borrow, to inspire your game. Uh, it's just cool. And the Slavic, uh, I love Slavic culture. I, I, I'm fascinated with... Uh, Estonia and Poland. Uh, I'm trying to find a good bio, a good, uh, a, a good uh, history of Poland. Clever. If you know a good, um, if you know a good history of Poland, <laughs> send it my way. Um, send me the link and I'll buy it. But because uh, I want a good, a good one that spans. And Poland, Poland's one of the only countries that's conquered Russia and occupied uh, Moscow and and governed it. You know, Napoleon went there, but he didn't stay very long. <laughs> Hitler didn't stay very long either. And the Mongolians just burned everything down and then, <laughs> then left. But uh, yeah, Poland is a very vibrant and interesting country, and it gets a very short shift in modern in modern culture, which drives me crazy. I thought Momoa played the the role of country. I loved, I loved him. Yeah, Momoa. Momoa that's that. He's Aquaman too, right? Um, I loved him, and I thought he looked like Conan. He didn't talk like an idiot. He just because Conan's not an idiot. Uh, no, I did. I, I loved him. It just the movie needed a little, you know, a little tweaking. <clears throat> the new coming was so, was so damn boring. My only problem with it, I shouldn't say I enjoyed it. It was okay, but I hate it when they do things like when he's fighting the wizard guy or whoever, and his sword is like this chain nunchuck sword or something. I hate that shit. I absolutely. I'm going to give you guys a spoiler. So I'm, this will be a little bit of a spoiler. It's on the TV show Vikings. Now, I love this show. I absolutely love this show, especially the first four seasons. Fantastic show. If you have not watched it, please go watch it. It's the way a D&D movie should be made. At least the first season. Just watch the first season. That's the way a D&D movie should be made. But the, the, the authors, the writers, they, what they really want to do is show the brilliance of their Viking guys uh, on the, tactically on the battlefield. So when they have this, it only happens three or four times, but when they have these set-piece battles, they just they make up the stupidest crap to have the battle go one way or the other. I was so brilliant. The latest one was putting 500 bear traps in, in the leaves and deep pits that people were jumping out of. It was, it was all unnecessary. <laughs> it was completely unnecessary. And that's the same thing with those flying swords. What was that sword and a sorcerer that had the rocket-propelled sword? None of those things happen in the Middle Ages because they weren't practical in an arc. Uh, and a sword that's a nunchuck thing isn't practical. That's why they don't do it. Uh, if you're fighting, I'm sure if you're fighting some particular fighting styles in China, perhaps, or Korea or Japan, they've got specialty weapons for that. But against men and chainmail and with heavy shields and huge broadswords, it's just not going to work. Uh, I had the idea that like 10 years ago they should cast the rock as Conan's son, have Arnold do a cameo sitting in stone with Grace Jones and Rock <laughs> as Grant and Bill's on rep. Oh, no, that would be interesting. Wasn't there a son of Conan somewhere? Somewhere. Uh, <laughs> do we agree? That's, <laughs> that's just funny. Yeah, I love the class on the English Reformation I took. Uh, that's, a cool, that's a cool period. Canterbury, yes, the Bishop of Canterbury. Steve and I have recovered pretty well from COVID. Still have a little bit of a brain fog at times and good, a good deal of fatigue. Well, I'm glad to hear it, Geek Preacher. For those of you who don't know, Geek Preacher got COVID uh, about... Three weeks ago, two weeks ago, right around Christmas, but he's on the he's on the men, so that's good. That's like our own Todd Gray here. He got it. And he he came out of it good, so that's good. That's good, Geek. I'm also looking for a good Poland book. There you go. Slavic history is another fave topic of mine. I love it, and it's just not written about much over here. I'm sure if you go to Poland, you can find plenty of books on Poland. Just not here. I am pumped. It looks like the new Dragonlance books are going to be written by Wise. Yes, thank God. I need to catch one right. Yeah, clever. It's great. I, the show's very frustrating sometimes, but aren't they all? Uh, absolutely love, absolutely love Vikings. Uh, and the guy who plays um, Ragnar is, he's just fantastic. And it's, it's so frustrating that these guys in The Walking Dead and, and shows like The Viking and The Last Kingdom, they don't seem to get the recognition that they deserve in the awards because they're doing these fantasy or horror or whatever they are. I don't care what you think about Walking Dead. That's not important. But if you watch... Yes, Travis Fimmel. If you watch some of the episodes where Andrew Lincoln is fully into his character of Rick Grimes, his acting is through the roof. The scene where his wife gets eaten, that's early, early on. That's a spoiler for you. 
when he when he finds that out is actual pain. It's painful to watch. It became a meme on the internet. But if you're watching it, his his acting is through the roof. And this Travis Fimmel, man, his acting is just. 10 out of 10. It's just 10 out of 10. I mean, these guys go all into their character and it's believable, and that's pretty cool. In the last three or four Ace paperbacks, the Conan series written by DeCamp, blah, 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 all those guys. Conan 2, nickname Khan. That's who I'm thinking of, but that was, okay. That's what, I, I knew there was something somewhere in there, but I kind of get it mixed up. There was, Burroughs did create a son of Tarzan. Korak, I think his name was. That's book two, four, three? I don't know. Um, when fantasy tries to look badass, it looks silly. Realism and grit goes way further than, than, than over the top. Yep. Not to mention the detachment between the uber-fantastic and our perception of reality. We can connect with the pain of being stabbed by a spear. We have no records. Touchstone to being diced into cubes and being exploded somewhere. Yeah, exactly. That's it, King Kotho. And that's and when, you, when you watch Vikings, like if you watch the first opening sequence, you know, they're fighting with spears, short swords, and axes, and the head of the axe is about that big which is all realistic based on history, you know, what we've dug up from archaeological grave sites and all that bullshit. Uh, they don't have swords like you see in Warhammer where the blade is, you know, <laughs> this big. Um, you couldn't swing it. You couldn't, you could barely carry it unless it was magical. You couldn't, you damn well couldn't swing it. You couldn't swing it more than five minutes if you did. Uh, that's why the two-handed sword wasn't used as a common weapon. It was definitely used, but not as a common weapon. Why the Romans went with a short sword, but if they if they would just focus on doing hyper realistic stuff, you know, it goes so much better. And why the Last Kingdom and uh, Vikings are such fantastic TV shows. And if they could take and if you read Robert E. Howard, he does that right. Howard Conan doesn't. He's not jumping around and flying off a of crap and doing all kinds of goofy shit. He's a barbarian who fights with a blade. And when he's fighting even sorcery, it's all this kind of underspoken dark tones of you know, what is that, uh, mesmerism and all of that kind of stuff. It's really cool stuff that when you're reading Howard, you're like, yeah, that's, that, I can believe any of this. You can get into that really easy. And even in Tolkien stuff, Gandalf isn't jumping around, lightning bolting and doing all kinds of stuff like, you know, the, the all-out fantasy. What is it, Saruman puts his will forward and it, and, and it slows Aragorn, Gimli, and Legolas from crossing Rohan. It's just Saruman's will, and it's just a cool way of... It's just a different way of doing things. Howard said in a letter, SES is some are better than others, but it's my fave TV series. Would have recommend them just for the stories. Yeah, the Vikings, yeah, absolutely. And some are some are hard to watch. <laughs> some are hard to weather. And they start later. Some of the characters are very hard for me to get around. Now, at the end of the day, I like good to triumph. So, yes, yeah, some are better. See, glorious. Howard said in a letter that Conan invariably sired a bunch of bastards, but... Never said whether or not he had a son. Yeah, it's best just to leave that stuff. It's just leave out. You may be correct on that. I have a complete collection of Howard's Cosmines, blah, 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 blah. I will definitely be using the Codex Egyptium for my 2021 campaign. I am use, going to utilize three of the Codex. Oh, very cool, Geek Preacher. I love that Codex Egyptium. That's, I don't know if it's my favorite. I love the Celtic book, but I, I love the con. I'm just a huge fan of Egypt. Ancient Egypt is just, uh, they look badass. They just look badass. They were the coolest of all. Of our species. I mean, the World War II American GIs looked pretty badass, and the Pawnee Indians, they looked pretty badass. But I think the Egyptians went. They just went. They just looked cool. <laughs> just color, power, uh, everything was, I don't know, just very cool. Absolutely love Egyptians. Uh, my litmus, litmus test for whether or not I like a book, RPG, whatever, is whether or not the characters are jumping on the covers. If they are fighting on two solid feet, I will probably like it. If someone is mid flip or lipping in the air doing a flight, I will probably not like it. Yeah, I have, we have a we have a bit of a struggle with that here sometimes. <laughs> there's uh, yeah, uh, there's I, I I'm I'm the same way, King. I want anything I'm looking at to be grounded in reality. Um, I don't even the fantasy stuff. I don't want it to be crazy. Even if it's a dragon, uh, I don't want it to be crazy. I want it to be. I like the dragon from Dragon Slayer, I thought. And I actually like the dragons from, um, what's the Matthew McConaughey movie? Ring of Fire? Ring of Fire? No, that doesn't sound right. Something of fire. Um, fire Pit? I don't know. Whatever the hell it is. Some kind of fire thing. Um, I love the dragons in that because it was all kind of done. It was all grounded in some kind of realism. Rain of Fire, yeah. It was, it was grounded in realism. And I, and I liked it. Um, it's when they go over the top that, that I don't care for it. Uh, I'm partial to of Wallachian history lore, but it's hard to find. I'll bet you can hardly find anything of <laughs> Wallachian history. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's for those who don't know, Wallachia is a province of Romania. Uh, it's, um, 
Yeah, that's some pretty obscure history. Yeah, the Balkan stuff is very cool. I did my when I did my master's degree, I did it on Austro-Hungarian history, so I got a lot of Balkan you know, Balkan stuff in my in my brain pan. And I got a lot of history on the Habsburgs, but not not much on on Wallachia. And one of my favorite combat scenes in the book is in Mushashi. There's a fight in a dojo with wooden weapons. The buildup is incredible, but the fight is over in a short sentence. Really great book. And that's probably how most of those fights occurred. <laughs> they were probably over very, very quickly. I actually like acrobatic fighting in my fantasy, but there's a line between looking bad at... Yeah, that's it, Jason. If, if done correctly, it's cool. The movie Hero, uh, which is a Chinese film, I think, I, I loved. I To this day, I love the visuals in that because it's done proper the fighting there you do got a lot of the flying and stuff but it's done i don't know it almost demigod-esque i guess but without weird noises and and whatever yeah whatever uh, i loved hero i thought it did that i thought it did that very very well um whoa dude <laughs> i'm not sure who you're whoa uh my sca persona is wallachia oh that's very cool <laughs> that's very cool uh, so it is pronounced Walikia. Walakia? Walakia or Walikia? Now I got Waikiki. I, you know, I served when I was in the Army. I was in Hawaii. Waikiki. Waikiki. Good God, I couldn't, I couldn't remember that. How's it going, 42 data squirrels? Ohana. Um, Walakia. I'll have, to, I'll have to get on you. Know, they got those things online now where they'll do the pronunciation for you. Uh, Walikia. It's very cool. It's a... Uh, it's a pretty obscure place, Blood Wild. Very, <laughs> very, very obscure, but very cool. Uh, it's a very vibrant culture down there. Yeah. Good stuff. I love the Balkans. Wa, see, so Wall, so Wallachia. 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 There you go. Wallachia. Wallachia. It's a very cool part of the world. I've always wanted to go to Romania. Yay, I did it! <laughs> so, Steve, anything big on the horizon for this year? Oh, my God, we got so much going on, I can't keep up. Uh, so we're, I'm going to wrap up this is a great wrap, wrap up Mr. Obadiah uh, so we're finalizing the Starship Warden uh, I'm really hoping that that's at the printers within the next 30 days that's the first big thing that we're rolling out Davis has been hammer, absolutely hammering me with NPC almanac files I haven't had a chance to, to organize them yet so I'm hoping that gets kind of wrapped up very soon uh, and then the player's handbook we're deep into the CKG Third printing we're deep into. So those four projects are the primary focus. And of course, it's Monster Treasure of Air for 5th edition. We'll get that wrapped up here very soon. Uh, thanks, pleasure. Uh, clever. It definitely is. Definitely. We'll look forward to seeing you later this week or next Tuesday. Um, and then we're going to, as soon as this stuff is cleared off of my plate, which means it's into layout and printing or whatever, which I'm really hoping by the end of January, that's where we are. It's a tall order, but I think we can do it. If not, then definitely within the early February. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, DM the CKG. Um, the, then we're going to dive right into this Planescapes, and uh, it's Robert E. Howard Kickstarter launch in March. Uh, and since that's not a troll product, meaning to say that's not trolls writing it, we're just producing it and publishing it, uh, then our team, me, Jason Davis, everybody can dive into all of these other projects from Abstract to the Planescapes to the Of Gods and Monsters book and get these things rolling. So I'm really hoping 2021 is this gigantic expansion of the CNC universe and the aired universe. Uh, you know, we've already got so many source books on this game that it's... I'm, I'm not sure any other RPG has this much out there. Uh, not, and I'm not talking modules, I'm talking source material that you can take and expand your game with. Um, that I'm just looking forward to really pushing that. Uh, just pushing that stuff. You know, so much more of it. Making this a really... A, we get this Planescape stuff down uh, like I want it, then we'll have a game system that is unrivaled, I think, with the, the, the breadth of stuff that it offers uh, all of us to just dive into, rip to pieces, and use, you know, borrow what we want, <laughs> toss what we don't want. Uh, so it's, it's going to be crazy. I'm hoping 2021 is, is crazy in a good way. 2020 was kind of crazy, but let's go, <laughs> let's go the other way. <laughs> yeah, we will, Clever, we will, yes. <laughs> All right, everybody, on that note, uh, you all have a great evening. Uh, we'll be back Thursday. Uh, DM Sam was running a game tomorrow. Uh, we'll be back GM Strix Trading Thursday and again <sighs> next week uh, for Ask Me Anything on Tuesday, uh, Tuesday afternoon. So you all have a great evening. Uh, I'm going to go find some grub. Uh, and then we're running a little CNC tonight. So uh, everybody, <clears throat> take care. We'll see you on Thursday. <laughs>